here we go there we are <laughs> hi everybody i hope that you're okay just gonna wait and see if anybody else joins us If you are joining in do let me know in chat that you're there because otherwise I can't tell <laughs> um, so if, if anybody's there just drop me a, a quick message and say hello I do know that it's um, Mother's Day here in the UK so um, there may be some people that are tied up with that um, I have to wait and see So I'll just give it a couple of minutes and see if anybody joins in and if not I'll just broadcast and uh, usually in the last couple of sessions people have joined in part way through as well so I'll just deliver a live session and you can catch up later. So I hope everybody's well, hope that you're um, having a great Sunday if you are celebrating Mother's Day. I hope you're enjoying your day. Hello, Ricardo. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Great to see you. Glad that you can join us. Hope you're having a really lovely day. It's so sunny here. I've had to... Hi, Connie. Joining us from Colorado. That's great. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Lincolnshire in the UK and um, I've had to actually pull my blinds down because I couldn't see my screen so um, yeah it's it's just lovely and I've been treated very well by my family I think some of you met Zoe last time so she's made me a beautiful card and um, hi Linda I was uh, I got up very early to make sure everything was set up in here today and uh, then they made me a lovely breakfast. Hi Karen, glad that you found us. Um, no technical issues so far, <laughs> I hope I'm not speaking too soon. So if you were around last month we had an absolute technical nightmare and it was <laughs> very difficult to get things going but we got there in the end. Um, so yeah, hope you're well. I'm going to be, um, we're working on our slow stitch sampler piece, so I'm just going to bring in the rest of my page for this month, um, and this one's going to sit in the corner there. I haven't decided which way around to put it yet, and obviously I'll trim it back. So I've put my three panels together um, for this month. So we started off, we were using looped stitches this month, so we've learned chain stitch, and fly stitch and feather stitch and some detached versions of some of those stitches and so in week one we played around with those stitches and made our, our little daffodil scene and I've seen some absolutely gorgeous versions of the daffodils and um, other people playing with those stitches um, so it's just fab um, and then we did our birdhouses with the pomp nesting. So this was yellow pomp. It's, that was our colour week. And the pomp was yellow. Um, so that was daffodils. Then uh, we had our word pomp. And we used the word nesting. And we created some little nesting boxes. I know that the camera's a little bit further away. If I bring it up it might go out of focus a little bit. But um so we did our nesting boxes and we used a stick and stitch, our Fabri-Solvi um, stick-on stabiliser that we then washed away. Um, it was water-soluble, um, so it allowed us to get some really nice lettering um, that was quite precise. Um, and then we made our little birdhouses. And then last week, this might be my favourite panel so far, I just I can't stop touching it. <laughs> I keep playing with the little toggly bits. 
um, remind our blossom tree and I'll say some absolutely stunning blossom trees um, on Instagram and lots of you have gone for the Forsyth here um, which I absolutely love you'll know from the beginning of that video that I was quite tempted to do Forsyth here but couldn't resist Laburnum because it reminded me of my grandma so that was uh, that's our month so far and we're just going to add in our slow stitch panel so I've got a little bit of a treat for us today I've tried really hard to come up with something interesting to show you how to do um, and uh, I think I've got something that's seasonal it's Mother's Day appropriate and um, and it's it's just quite cute so that's good so um, Rich reminded me to swap screens I, I always forget so I'm going to swap screens now so that you can see what I'm doing so I've made a start on my panel and I've just put in some yellow pan, uh, pieces in the background so I've got this little um, pale yellow it's like a Sanderson fabric it's quite thick like upholstery fabric and I've got this um, you probably it probably won't pick up on the camera but this has got a bit of gold in it so it's got a bit of shimmer to it and then I've got my Japanese yarn dye that I used for the um, stands on the birdhouse and a little bit more upholstery fabric and I've just put a little arrangement there in the background so that's going to be my foundation and I thought we could start by just using some of our stitches of the month. So um, I'm, I'm learning. I've got my scissors on a piece of felt to stop them crashing every time I put them down and the microphone picking it up. And I've pre-threaded, look, I've got my pre-threaded uh, needles here. So you don't have to watch me doing tons of um, threading and knotting. So... Um, I thought we could just start off by doing a little bit of therapeutic stitch so I'm going to try and use our loot stitches um, initially so um, we, I'm just going to add in some detail so while I'm stitching I hope you're stitching too um, if you're going to stitch later that's absolutely fine um, but we can just put some decorative stitch on our panel so while I'm doing this why don't you chat to me in the chat pane and um, let me know where you are what you're up to today what the weather's like where you are and um, say hello We've had a real change in weather in Lincolnshire in the last week or so. It's been really warm. So much so that my daughter's school sold ice lollies um, at the end um, the end of Friday uh, because it was so warm. And uh, so she, we were scrabbling around because I, I don't tend to have lots of cash. Um, very much we're so used to paying by um, contactless because of Covid that I don't tend to use very much cash anymore and we had to raid every drawer and cupboard I was mooching at the bottom of my bag trying to find coins and we managed to cobble together 50 pence which was how much it was going to cost for a lolly and uh, didn't want her to be disappointed so she she managed to get it um so there we go <laughs> but it, yeah it's been really warm it's definitely spring all of a sudden so after a really bleak and gray and really quite destructively stormy january and february it's definitely spring here now and um i'm just loving it love sunshine 
I don't know about you, but um, grey skies really affect me um, and they just make me feel really quite sad all the time. So I feel so much brighter now that the sun's out and it's feeling like everything's getting better. So I'm just loving it. So uh, Karen, I'm just reading your comments about chain stitch. Um, yeah, it's it. Chain stitch can be. I think people either love chain stitch or hate it. Um, so why don't I do a bit of chain stitch now, and maybe just demo that again to try and help make it make a bit more sense. So. Um, if you remember, so I've just done some fly stitch, which is one of my go-tos um, there, and I'm just going to put in some chain stitch. Um, I'm not, I'm just not happy with the focus of that camera, so I'm just going to see if I can move it a little bit. It is going to come into the the pane a little bit. I'm just going to see if I can move it a little bit to get better focus. I don't know whether it needs to go up or down. Hopefully not any better. Might have to have a bit of a play with it. I hope you can see it well enough. Um, I did set it up, but I'm I'm wondering whether it's been knocked and moved. So um, it's not totally straightforward to um, to change it. Right. I don't know where that um, that repeats coming from. Sorry. I've had all this sorted let me see maybe it's that one that's uh... right you're I know there's a delay but you'll have to tell me if that's better um, I'm hoping it is so chain stitch yeah so you come out from the back of your fabric and you um, go back in where you came out so we're going to go back in at exactly the same point and I'll keep it nice and big so that you can see um, and what we've made is a loop there of thread it's that yellow on yellow thing again isn't it um, so we've made a loop of thread and all I need to do is make sure that my thread goes under my needle um, And so when I pull it through, the working thread, so the thread that I'm currently working with, catches my um, loop in place like that and um, forms the chain. And so now I'm just going to make the same, I'm going to do exactly the same process in a minute. Um, hi Ray! <laughs> Uh, good to have you with us. So I'm going to go back in where that working thread came out in that loop and do the same thing again. So my needle comes back out of the fabric and I'm hooking my thread underneath that needle so that I make the next link in my chain. When I pull through, I get another chain. So I'll do it again back in where my working thread comes out, needle point out and thread underneath the needle and pull through. So there we go. So Karen, if, if chain stitch is problematic, um, uh, it might help to practice it working straight rather than working around curves or around the edges of things um, so straight lines are it's much easier to see what's going where and if you practice working in straight lines you might then find that uh, following an outline or going around curves is much easier um, so yes I, I found it easier to 
learn by doing straight lines. I agree, Ray, I absolutely love chain stitch and I, I love how versatile it is. Um, so we've done our line of chains there. So I'm just going to use the rest of this thread to put in a little daisy. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, it, Ray, feel free to come and go as you please. And um, it's, it's one of those it's mother's day isn't it so it's one of those days where people are going to be busy with family and have all sorts of things going on <laughs> so if you're celebrating mother's day how have you been made to feel special today and um if you're not let me know how you're making the most of your sunday apart apart from joining me for a live stream If you're celebrating Mother's so Day, the lazy daisy is just some detached chain stitches worked in a circle so you can see I've put in uh, three there I'm just going to do five I'm running out of thread I'm doing my this is one of my really bad habits in embroidery is that I um, I use thread to its absolute elastic limit and even if it involves unthreading and re-threading my needle repeatedly <laughs> I just I can't help myself I'm not going to get my last peckle there that's so annoying I hate it when you run out of thread with like three stitches left or one stitch left it's it's just a nightmare I am not going to be able to get another peckle out of that one so yeah leaving that much thread <laughs> in your needle before you decide to stop is not a good practice <laughs> don't do as I do have I tried reverse chain stitch I have tried reverse chain stitch for me because I think I I think it depends whether you learn reverse chain stitch before um, standard chain stitch because some people um, find that because they learnt reverse chain stitch first they find it hard to do normal chain stitch I'm the opposite I learnt normal chain stitch and so reverse chain stitch takes a great deal of thought for me because it's it's not the one that I go to naturally so there's my little lazy daisy there in the corner let me see if I can do a bit of reverse chain stitch for you um, let's get a paler yellow so all we're doing really is adding some decorative stitches and then we're going to do a little bit of fabric work in a minute that's what these little circles here are for um, we're going to do a little bit of fabric work you can just see in the corner what we're going to be doing in a minute um, so reverse chain stitch see now I have to think about it right so we're going to make a little tiny, <laughs> I have to, I really have to think, we're going to make a little tiny uh, straight stitch to get us started. And then we're going to go down to the next, the length, we're going to go down a stitch length on our fabric. And what I'm going to do is take my needle through that little holding stitch um, that I've just made. And then we're going to go back go through where we came out. So then I'm going to go down a stitch length again. And I'm going to take my needle underneath that, um, that chain that I've just made, that first chain link. And then go back through to where I came out. 
I'm not explaining this very well. Say so this this does not come naturally to me. This version of chain stitch. It's um, it's a struggle, and I don't. My finish isn't as neat either. So there we go. So that's um, that's reverse chain stitch. If you were wondering what we were talking about. Um, so you, you basically make your first chain stitch as a sort of detached stitch and then you use that stitch to make your loops. It's also problematic on felt because there's the risk of picking up the pile of the felt. Um, so I'm going to leave it there because I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> I'm certainly not enjoying doing it in front of an audience. So... There we go. Ray's got gifts and cards from children and grandchildren. I'm glad you're being spoilt. I think today should be a day for women everywhere to be spoilt, mothers or not. Um, so I think it's a day to treat yourself. Um, so what what else do we need? We need some feather stitch, don't we? So I've got this nice. I'll put it on the table. I've got this nice. Uh, sort of gold it's one of my machine silks and if you've watched any of my videos you'll know that I love to hate machine silks because they have a mind of their own um, <laughs> Ray I'm so glad that I'm not the only one that ekes out my thread to the, the last possible moment um, because it's, I, I don't know why I do it I just think oh one more stitch and um, I, I've really got to stop doing it. <laughs> so we'll put in some feather stitch here and then I'm going to put in some more of these daisies. Let's do a double feather stitch. So all that means is that I'm, I'm doing three stitches in one direction and then going back and doing three in the other direction rather than just rocking backwards and forwards immediately. So I'm trying to read your comments before they disappear off the top of my chat pane. Um, yeah, Connie, it's it's so important, isn't it? Um, and this, uh, are you visiting Pennsylvania or are they visiting you? Um, and I'm glad you're going to get some embroidery in. It's, I think um, I spent most of my life thinking I was an extrovert. And um, have realised that I'm really not, um, because I I do love being around people, but I find it very exhausting, um, and I just love having a bit of sanctuary and a bit of quiet and time to just to stitch and not have to concentrate on conversation and things like that i thank you for noticing my nail varnish i'm so glad <laughs> i do try um i did start i don't know if you noticed in january my nail varnish hinted at um the color scheme for february um and uh but i i thought it it was too subtle and I like keeping it a surprise. So I hope you're excited for our colour scheme next month because I've started filming already and I'm loving it so far. So I'm not going to give any clues. Look, I've got my felt there and I've still cracked my scissors down on my table. Right, so I've got some feather stitch in there. It's not the neatest feather stitch I've ever done. Um, but hey-ho. Right, let's put some more daisies in and then we'll get on with our make of the day so what i'll try and do always on our live streams is um we'll do our slow stitch but we'll also do um some fabric work as well as some description so we'll try a, a fabric technique so in january we just did uh slow stitch but the fabric work we did was the suffolk puff or the yo-yo as um, it's known in America, I think. And um, and then last month we did 
English paper heating and I made a little mini Dresden plate and I've seen some really lovely things um, done with English paper heating. I'm not making Suffolk puffs today, um, I thought we'd try something more spring-like and Mother's Day um, appropriate. So, <laughs> um, there we go. Um, so it's uh, Connie I noticed that you said that they're visiting you so is it a house full or is it um, is it comfortable and manageable yeah I I think I used to be somebody that always played music and liked having the radio on and things like that but I think because I've been a teacher so long. Schools are such noisy places that I just love silence now. So whenever I'm at home, I tend to have silence because I just love it. And I, I quite like listening to the ambient noise that you get. So bird song outside or uh, the sound of the wind. Uh, Lincolnshire is very flat, so it does tend to be quite windy here. Um, so it's, I, I just quite like that. And we've got a lovely copper beech tree in our garden. And um, the leaves have got a sort of rattle um, to them. And it's, I just love the sound of that. I think it's, it's so therapeutic. I love it. Then the leaves aren't out yet. They've come out quite late. So um, that's that's one of my favourite summer sounds is uh, the sort of rattling copper beech leaves. Oh, that's that sounds totally manageable, Connie. Two adults. So um, good conversation, hopefully, and. Nice, nice to have some grown up time sometimes, isn't it? So, I'm just putting in some little lazy daisies there, and I do quite like layering stitches up, but I don't want them totally covered because. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to be restrained with my stitching this week because we're going to do something in a minute that's um, that's going to cover up some of this area. So I don't want to lose everything. I'm just doubling up this machine silk because it's um, it's really fine. So. I've got my um, feather stitch here, so what I think I'm going to do is just layer over it with another yellow thread. Um, I really like when stitches are built up over each other. Um, it's one of my favourite techniques to use, and if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see that I've... Um, haven't been posting very much this week it's just been quite a challenging week for lots of reasons so um, I've had a little bit of an Instagram break because I was feeling a bit overwhelmed by everything so um, I'll be back to normal next week hopefully um, but my planet series and my um, my stitch alphabet series that you can catch on Instagram, if you just have a look at my grid, if it's just at Feather Stitch House, um, you will see that I use layering quite a lot in the work that I do. So um, I just love the effect of stitches sitting over each other. I think it just looks gorgeous. Um, so there we go. Right. I'm going to pause 
with this so it will give you a chance to do a little bit more slow stitching on your own piece just um, let me know um, if you're stitching along or whether you're just watching and we'll catch up later um, that would be interesting to know see who's using it as a stitch along right I'm gonna have a little sip of my um, tea that Mr. T bought through for me. It's, um, don't be alarmed by the colour, it's raspberry and echinacea. And um, I've grown to quite like it. It's a little bit of an alarming flavour at first, but um, I've, I've cracked it now and I'm actually really enjoying it. Right, so what we're going to add are some little um, three-dimensional patchwork flowers and I'm, I've um, made a couple and we're going to make one together so that I can show you how to make them so we're going to place these on the surface and I'm going to run a little bit of a pole because <laughs> um, actually we can do this now so um, let me just answer some questions first of all. So um, I I don't have a die cutting machine, so I don't tend to use die cuts. Um, but I know it's a really good way of um, getting quite precise um, shapes when you're cutting. I tend to cut everything by hand. And so these circles I've cut by hand. And the trick, I do have a short, a, a reel on this on Instagram so if you look at the top of my Instagram grid there are tabs and if you look at the reels tab and scroll down um, I have actually got a reel on how to cut circles accurately and I think the the trick for me is that you keep your scissors still and turn the fabric so you I should I should have demonstrated it I would you believe I hardly have any fabric in front of me if I just cut a little bit of fabric out there's going to be something non-yellow coming into the shot how appalling look <laughs> that's the only fabric I've got nearby so if I just um, draw my circle this is a heat erase pen so this is actually a branded one it's a friction pen um, they work a treat Ooh. so um, I've got my circle drawn in I don't know how well you can see that on the pattern fabric maybe it's better if I do it on the back let's do that again that's better you can actually see it now so um, what I recommend is that the tip of your scissors you use for corners and fine work but when you're cutting shapes and particularly curves you should use the pivot point of the scissors all right so that's that's where we we want to cut and make sure you're using quality scissors so these are I've got two I've got three pairs of embroidery scissors one are a bit rubbish uh, and I just have them because they look nice and the other two one is a sewing devil's pair I'm not sponsored by the way these are just what I've got and these are fist scars and um, the key is to have scissors that cut right to the point so I can snip with the very tip of these scissors and I can cut right to the very end um, and that's really important so I'm going to use the heel of my scissors right down at the pivot point and you'll see I'm hardly moving the scissors at all I only move them when I need to um, get more of the blade and I never cut to the tip when I'm going around a curve because that's when you get like barbs on your cutting so my scissors stay still and the fabric is what gets turned and you can just ease it round and use the length of the blade of your scissors and another trick is to cut beyond your starting point so if I cut right I'm back to the start now but if I cut and just cut it off I'll actually get a little point there so I'm going to cut beyond 
where I think my starting point is and I'll end up with a really neat precise circle so that's that's how I cut my circles out I cut everything by hand um, I tend to find just machines quite time consuming and I hate I, I love machine sewing but I hate untangling and running out of bobbin thread it drives me up the wall so um, I just tend to do it by hand so what you are going to need for one of these oh I said we we're going to do the pole so I've made my little um, flowers and what I want to know is whether you think I should put a button in the centre so that's it with a button or I've got these really cute um, glass beads and I've got some wooden ones as well but I've got some glass beads as well that I just really like so this one's got sort of speckles on it I don't know if you can see that very well um, so I've got that one I've got another one there that I quite like as well so hopefully you can see it well enough should I use a bead as my middle or a button it's in, I'll let you decide you can um, you can tell me in the chat <laughs> um, so there we go uh, I'll show you the small one as well just so I've got a button centre or I've got um, I've got these cute little wooden beads as well <laughs> I might decide to use so buttons or beads it's up to you right so what you're going to need to make a flower of five circles that are the same size so I've got my yellow fabrics here and they're all quite thin lightweight cotton so these are just they're fairly inexpensive I've just bought a patchwork pack off the internet and it's it's quite low quality cotton really you wouldn't ever use it for dressmaking but for things like this for scrappy projects it works a treat so you just need five cut out that are the same size and you need some normal sewing cotton so this is silco thread and I've got a fairly long length you can't see it very well because it's quite pale I've got a fairly long length um, and I've just thread it threaded it up and put a decent size knot at the end so it's a much bigger knot than I would normally use on machine thread um, so that's my setup and the first thing I'm going to do is fold my circles in half right side out and just finger press them oh there's a lot of love for the beads <laughs> um, I think it's going to be beads so I'm just going to finger press them um, in half so I'm turning them into semicircles these are such quick little flowers to make and I think they just look lovely you could put more petals if you wanted to but um, the more petals you have that you can see there's a hole in the middle there and um, the more petals you have the bigger that hole is going to be so and the bigger the petals the bigger the hole as well so you just need to be aware of that before you start so I think five is perfect so that's why I'm using five okay and if your circle cutting is not great I should say don't worry too much because um, the edge of your circle you're not going to see um, so it will be hidden right so I've got my five little semicircles there so I've got my circle folded them and finger pressed them uh, you can iron them if you like but there's no real need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one and I'm going to start right in the corner here and I'm going to stay fairly close to the edge but not right at the edge because you don't want the fabric to fray and lose your stitches and I'm just going to do tiny running stitches all the way around that curved edge so not the straight edge the curved edge 
um, and I'm just going to running stitch all the way around. Those, those beads I've had for, I'm going to say 10 years <laughs> and when I said in that week one video for this month that I hardly use yellow, I really mean I hardly use yellow. Um, so I've never had a project that I've that has warranted yellow beads in 10 years. That's how rarely I use yellow. So I've gathered all the way around and I'm just pulling all of the thread through. Okay, so that's my running stitch. You can see it's already starting to gather up. And I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm not going to tie off. I'm just leaving my semicircle on the end of my thread and then I'm going to get my next um, semicircle and just repeat the process. So I'm just going to do the same thing with all five of my little circles or semicircles now. <laughs> do you key? <laughs> I noticed your comment, Karen. They're still babies. Yeah, um, I've, I've got things that are much older than that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I will have them for a good long while yet because I, although I've, what I'm enjoying, one of the things I'm enjoying about winging it is that because I'm limiting my colour palette, it's forcing me to use colours that I never really use. And I, I'm gaining a real appreciation of them. So I've become so much more of a fan of yellow this month than I ever have in my life. I'm just loving having loads of yellow stuff around me. Um, because I, I, I sort of keep all my things out for the month so that I can keep filming and getting other bits and pieces ready and things like that. So I've had yellow buttons and yellow beads out and yellow threads for the whole of March and I'm just loving the yellow in a way that I never have before. So I think I'm going to gain an appreciation of colours that I use so rarely as we move through the year. So I hope you're finding that is happening with you as well or maybe you've just hated yellow or you hated the grey I mean I never use grey either but I've, I've gained a real appreciation for grey as well um, so yeah lots of lots of good things that are coming out of winging it I've met some absolutely fabulous people I'm so glad that you're all still with me joining in and we're growing all the time so, all good. So I'm, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm, so I'm using my dominant hand forefinger to ease the fabric down the needle, and my left hand I'm using to move the fabric backwards and forwards so that I can um, gather it down fucking about with my needle too much so last one would you believe we've almost made our flower it's it's really quick and easy and gives you a great finish so just I think the only thing that could go wrong is that you don't gather closely enough. So the, the one thing you've got to make sure of is that you keep your stitches quite short when you're doing your running stitch. Um, so there we go. Right, so I've got a little string of um, semicircles that are stitched on now. Um, and they're all next to each other and tied together. So just it's just worth making sure they're all in the same direction 
so I've got all my curves down there just to make sure they're all heading in the same direction so all you do now is um, just pull and you have to do this gently because what you really don't want is for your thread to break and I'm really scared right now that that's what's going to happen um, so I, I lost I lost a thread earlier on um, when I was making my other two um, so you've just got to pull firmly enough so that your petals gather up but not so hard that your thread breaks and you can just ease your petals so they're all sort of forming cups in the same direction like that so you try and gather them up as far as you can don't overdo it because you will snap your thread and then what I'm going to do is just take my needle back through the very edge of that first petal where the knot is through the knot get a grip <laughs> right here we go my problem is that I haven't got my glasses on because if I wear my glasses the my ring light reflects in my lenses so um, I can't easily do this with my glasses on and I can't see very well without them so <laughs> I, it's I, I don't know what the answer is there Connie, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you can obviously catch up um, with the rest later and I hope you have a really lovely Sunday with your guests and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you next month as well. And you've got the whole day ahead of you. <laughs> so all good. Right, so there we go. So can you see how that's formed our little flower? So I've got my thread back through my first petal and this is where your quilter's knot comes in really handy because it means you can get a knot very close to the fabric and your flower isn't going to unravel so i'm just doing a little quilter's knot there right close to that first petal pull it tight and snip off my thread and although we've used a lot of thread we actually haven't used a lot of thread. You do need a decent length of thread because you've got to get all of your petals on. But you only use a small amount of it. So I could make another flower with that thread now if I wanted to. Um, so you're not going to use tons of thread. So I'm just going to ease my petals so that they're nice and even around that loop. And that's my little flower that's all there is to it it's really easy so five circles fold them in half and finger press run a thread around the curved edge of the semicircle um, keeping your stitches quite small and once you've got all five of them on you pull gently but firmly on the thread until all the petals gather up and form these cute little cups so I'm going to bring my slow stitch panel back in I think uh, the people have spoken and it's going to be beads in the middle so um, all good I, I was secretly hoping you'd say beads I, I've used buttons quite a lot and I've used lots of seed beads and we used a few bugle beads last week in our blossom tree I haven't used any chunky beads recently so I'm going to just decide where my flowers are going to go. So I think I'm going to put the big one there in that space. And I might put that one there and the little one just down in the corner like that. So I can still, because it, obviously the camera flattens them out, because they're curved up, I can still see quite a lot of, my stitching underneath and I might add some more daisies so I'm just going to put a little mark through the center so that I know where I want to position them and to stitch them on all I'm going to do is catch 
so I'm coming up through the middle of the flower and I'm just going to put a couple of little stitches over the gathers just to catch them down in place these make lovely brooches by the way I did think about making one big flower and backing it with a circle of felt and sewing a pin on and just pinning it on to my panel so that I could remove it but um, I just decided I, I wanted I just wanted them permanently in place I think they're, they're you could do that that would be quite a fun thing to do interactive fabric art there you go you can take bits out and wear it <laughs> um, so uh, that'd be quite a fun thing to do so let me know if you do that because that's that seems like quite a lot of fun I sort of wish I'd done it now talk myself into it um, so yeah I'm just going around the edge and threaded my needle and just putting some stitches over those gathers to just catch the flower and hold it in place on my backing Keep it firmly there. So I thought, as it was Mother's Day, we could um, we could do flowers. I thought flowers seemed like the right thing to do for Mother's Day. Um, There we go. Yeah, I think I could probably end up losing it as well, Karen, if uh, <laughs> if mine was detachable. If you do want to turn this into a brooch, if you have a look on elsewhere on my channel, there is a tutorial for a fabric yeah, fabric sunflower brooch, and um, the just skip past the petals bit and I show you how to put the felt backing on and how to attach the pin so if you if you did want to turn this into something that you could remove and wear or if you wanted to make another one just to wear as a brooch um, that's a video that that shows you how to do that so there are instructions on my channel elsewhere right I need a button for the middle of this so let's have a look that one's quite fun that one's got like um i don't even know what to call that like little petals on it maybe that one would look nice oh, i don't know maybe that one's nice that looks like a sweet what do we think i'm gonna just have performance anxiety now oh, i've got a broken one in there that's really sad the only problem with glass beads isn't it you uh they break um i could have a wooden one wooden bead in the middle what do we think some advice <laughs> so we've got round wooden we've got the one that looks like a, a fruit pastel or we've got the one that's got sort of petal shapes on it let me know what you think I'm leaning towards the wooden one so if you think I'm making a mistake it's got oh that one's quite nice that's got sort of silver in it right I'm gonna leave them there you have to uh, you'll have to let me know what you think which one I should use first one stood out more on camera this one here the one with the petal shapes you'll have to let me know I, I will pass that on to Zoe, Karen, that the uh, tacking your um, shape onto the fabric, um, I think that's 
that yeah not i haven't often seen that as a step um i will test that one the gray one that one the one with the petal shapes right that's what we're going for everybody's saying that one so that's what i'm going for this is going to be quite a chunky panel on this page but i really don't care um yeah, it's not because not i think we've worked flat quite a lot haven't we so far so i think having a bit of dimension um is gonna this help be quite pretty just add a little bit of variety to our book really and uh, uh, quite like i quite like texture yeah. you will have you will have learned that already so i'm just gonna put several stitches because these beads are, are fairly mm -hmm. as beads go they're quite heavy mm -hmm. because they're made of glass mm -hmm. um i'm just going through a few times just to make sure that they're nice and securely on there so that's my first little flower but several stitches because these oh, are i'm loving that that's very cute There's one, right, I need some more thread. So glad I threaded these all off earlier. Right, so let's put my little one on there. So that was going to go down here. Remember I put my dots on through the centre so that I know where I'm heading. So I think I probably only need one little stitch on each petal. Yeah, I think I think that's good thinking, Karen. It's quite the uh, the idea that because the pet the bead stands up above the petals, when this is in a book, that that bead, yeah, I think you're right. It's going to protect the petals and stop them getting squashed. So um, I've inadvertently done something quite practical there. <laughs> um, that's good thinking. That would never have occurred to me. I just don't think in that way. I'm quite impulsive. So um, I just do things because I like the way they look. I don't really think about the practicalities. So um, there we go. So while I'm just putting these on, I should also say that um, I have a April stitch tutorial video ready to go and I'm going to upload that this evening so that will be available later on today and um, that means that um, once you've watched that video you will have full repertoire of basic embroidery stitches and that's worth me mentioning because if you've had a look on our website and seen our kits by the time you've done those um the april video and learned the stitches in that you will have learned all the stitches you will need to do any one of our kits so um there are there are no kits that go beyond the stitches we've learned so if you can do those stitches you can do any any one of the kits in our collection so um we're not going to stop learning stitches though i've, I've planned out stitch groups of stitches for every month um and uh so we're going to keep learning all through the year but our basic uh, repertoire is in place once you've done that april video so yeah we we've, we've got our embroidery skill set um and we're only four months in so i wonder where we're going to go next um there we go right i'm just noticing some questions um so uh no so from what i understand i've done fairly extensive research on heat erased pens you have to expose them to heat above 60 degrees so with friction pens um i'm just looking for a bit of paper i happen to have a hexagon left over from last month 
um, nearby. Mm. So with friction pens, they come with this sort of rubbery end and you can use it like an eraser. Okay. Oh, crikey, I'm wobbling the camera. So when you erase it, um, the friction that is created by that, that rubber bit on the end will take the pen away. Um, so that works that works pretty well it's hard to do that on fabric it's hard to get enough friction on fabric so you can iron it and um, uh, just quite a cool iron is hot enough to remove it so I have mine on its lowest setting and that removes it um, fairly well and saves you from melting any synthetic fabrics that you might be using but if you don't want to iron, so if you've got really delicate fabric or you don't want to crush it, you can also erase it with a hairdryer. And um, so you all you do is just um, blow dry it with a hairdryer and it, the, the blast of air, although it's, it's not necessarily 60 degrees when it hits your head because that's, that will hurt hi Brenda <laughs> um, uh, it's if you get the hairdryer fairly close that's hot enough to get rid of the pen um, and if you're really concerned about your fabrics as you've seen me do over and over again in our videos turn them over and iron them from the back or you can even blast them with um, steam from a steam iron and that will that will do the job as well so I know a lot of people um, avoid heat erase pens because they worry about having to iron the fabric, but there are other options as well. Um, so don't think that you it's it's iron or nothing because there are other ways to get rid. So I'm just putting my last uh, flower on now. I'm just I'm trying to steer clear of my border because obviously um, I'm going to trim this back so that it. Um, it fits properly on my page. So we're working on eight eight centimeter squares, which I think is about three in, three inches or three and a half. Um, but I've added a one centimeter border, a quarter of an inch for people using old money, um, all around, so that I've got some space to um, to work. And if my felt becomes a little bit distorted, I can trim it back and square it back up. So that's why I've got my little border. You can probably see see it there. Um, I I only now use heat erase pens because there are options for getting rid of the ink. Um, with with these flowers, by the way, you don't need to worry about erasing the ink because it's all tucked inside. Um, you can't see any ink. Um, so you don't even need to worry about it. I've I've tried air erase pens in the past. Um, I've tried water erasable pens, and um, nothing for me works quite so well on felt because they tend to be fibre tips. Water erase and heat erase because they tend to be fibre tips. You can't get a really sharp line, and because um, felt's fuzzy. And is textured. It's it's then really hard to um, get to sort of mark your fabric precisely. Um, and I just I re I, I've struggled uh, for decades. The other thing I use, I wonder if I can find it quickly. I'll show it you next time. I've got another little gadget that I use that's quite. That's quite handy for felt as well, but I'll show it to you next time. I'll make a little note to myself straight afterwards. So that's my last little flower, and I think I was going to go for. Let's try and find. So I've got a little speckly one, or I've got one that's you won't. There's no way you'll pick the camera will pick that up. Um, but it's got a sort of swirl on it. So we've got that one, or we've got speckles, or what was the other one? Oh, there's this one as well, or there's that one. 
So, okay. what do you think? So, the white background, the white speckles on the yellow bead, or the yellow bead that's got a swirl on it. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, I have seen people use heat guns before, but they are incredibly hot, and so you do have to be quite cautious. I, I, if I was using a heat gun on these, I would start way away from the fabric and bring it gradually closer, so and um, until the ink disappears. But um, I know this looks like ink, by the way, but it's not. It's part of the print on fabric. Um, so yeah, you just have to be really cautious with heat guns because they are proper, proper hot. Uh, I mean, they can char paper. I, I believe I don't have one. Uh, I've got one for paint, but um, I don't have a craft heat gun. Um, so, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> There's lots, lots of agreement on avoiding ironing. I, I remember. I don't know what's happened. I remember my my nan, my dad's mum, used to iron everything. So she would iron underwear. She would iron socks. <laughs> Um, all sorts of things. She would iron the labels in clothes, and my grandmother would iron tea towels. And she, I remember her distinctly with a flat iron. So she only had a flat iron, and she would, um, she had a spray bottle of water, and she'd put the ironing board up in the kitchen with Radio Two on in the days before it sort of reinvented itself, and you'd have people like Roger Whittaker on with his whistling songs and she would iron away to Roger Whittaker and um, spray with water and then use her flat iron. Put the speckle one on again. This speckle one, I'll, I'll do all three of them again. Although I now can't see what I've done with the other speckle bead. So is that speckle bead, oh there it is, the swirly yellow bead or the white background speckle. Um, so yeah, I have lots of fond memories. I, you'll hear me talk about my grandma a lot because she was a really important person in my life. Um, so yeah, I I have lots of quite amusing memories of her, but some quite fond memories. So I'm just waiting for your guidance on which bead. I know which one I would go with if you weren't here, but I'll let you uh, wade in and let me know what you think. <laughs> There we go. I'll do it again. So that one. That one. Or oh, can't find it. <laughs> There's so little on my desk compared to normal, and I oh, there it is. And I can't believe I keep losing things. So we've got yellow. We've got. Yellow with white speckles, or we've got the white background bead. Just Let me know what you think. So, I think we're almost there. I might just um, leave that thread for a minute, and just until I know what bead to use. I might just put in another couple of um, daisies. In the background. See if I'll take it tied or not. Everyone's going for the speckle bead. <laughs> I think the speckle bead has it. I'm just going to do a smaller, just a little tiny daisy. might find some seed beads to put in the middle of, of these um, daisies in the background although I did quite I don't quite I don't really mind them as they are
yeah, it is a bit like a vortex in here, Karen. I can have things in my hand one minute and um, just can't find it. I spent about two hours the other day looking for some linen that I, I had literally had in my hand the previous day and could not for the life of me remember where I'd put it. I'm doing it again, look, with my tiny thread ends. Must try harder. <laughs> Just, oh, that gets a grip. <laughs> Bad news. So, there you go, there's my little background there you see I might just put one more in because four doesn't seem the right number but I might do that off camera look I've made a right big zero back of that see I hide all these things from you when I make my videos normally can't hide anything in a live stream it's all we'll, we'll call it nerves <laughs> Right, I'm just going to go back and put this bead on then. So I think we agree. People wanted the speckle one, so that's the one I'm going to put in. So I'm just going to add in my final bead. And again, I'm just going to put in a few stitches. So normally with seed beads, I would just put in one stitch, but these are chunky and fairly heavy as beads go so I'm just gonna make sure they're really on there both is not on the back is pure and I think I think we're done so let's move those out of the way so that is going to be added in to my page so it's going to look something like that um not i haven't quite decided on the right orientation yet but i'll have i'll have to have a play around and see which way looks best oh, i think i like it that way I think I like it that way. So I think it's going to look like that. So, um, and I'm just, if I can find it, oh no, I'll put it away. I was going to get my aperture out so I could take away the excess and show you, but I'll put it away um, so it wasn't in my way while I was working. So that's our uh, slow stitch panel for May. No, it's March. <laughs> um, and... Uh, I'm just going to bring back in my previous pages. So we've got, um, this was our January page for those of you that are new. This was our January page and there were five Sundays in January we made our little tab. This was our slow stitch panel with our Suffolk puff. And uh, the fifth week we looked at applique. So we made a, an applique tab. And the pattern for this is on our website in our shop. So that's January. And there are videos on how to put your page together and how to do a double-sided page. Uh, that's part one and part two of um, the Make a Book video. And then um, February was cold colours. So this was our February page. This was the... Um, Dresden plate that I was talking about earlier that we made in our live stream session last week. So this was English paper piecing and I've made my February tab with, um, I used whipped back stitch for that in a variegated thread so that it looks quite cute. So that was our February page and my March page will go on the back of that. So once I've added in this one I'll just use exactly the same technique. To make February and March 
um, and there won't be another episode of the Make a Book series until probably the end of May, so I'm going to have, um, I just want a couple more double-sided pages to um, put in so that I can show you because the next stage is going to be how we join pages together and then later in the year we'll talk about how to make a spine and a cover and then so I'm trying I don't really like having all that work to do at the end so I'm going to try and build my um, build my book as I go along so that it's not all left to do at the end because December's quite a busy month anyway um, I'm just looking at your questions so uh, you like the big flower in the corner do you mean that corner like that um yeah i think it's nice i quite i quite like the fact that this one's floral and so is this one there's a little bit of harmony across the page um yeah i i haven't got a lot of yellow either I, but what i quite like about these flowers is that you can make them out of the tiniest little scraps of fabric so uh, i mean just a, a square that's like three or four centimeters square um is enough so that's fine yeah, I, am i going to back the february page um it march will be the back of february because there's there's only been four sundays in each of those months so i think the next five five sunday month is may um so i'll have april and then may's panel and then may's fifth week panel will be the, the front of the june page so if that makes sense so um so yeah february is going to be backed with march does that does that make sense <laughs> um so right so that's going to go that way right i will let me just mark this corner so that i know that's bottom line um so that that's the way round it's going to go <laughs> which is the way around I've made it actually so um, so when that page is together it will go on the back of February so I'll have February and March will be back to back and I'll make a little March tab for um, going on the back of the February tab and so that will be that page and then April will be here May will be on the back and May's fifth week will be the front of the next page it does almost seem like i planned it doesn't it <laughs> it appears more planned than it actually is so um there we go right so i'm gonna end there i hope you've enjoyed um making little flowers with me i'm really looking forward to seeing your makes Look out for our April Stitch tutorial video later on today. I'm going to upload it straight after I finished here. And um, I, I really ought to go and spend some time with my kids now um, as it's Mother's Day. So have a really lovely afternoon, everyone. Um, enjoy the sunshine and enjoy Sunday uh, and a bit of uh, Sunday Slow Stitch. And I will see you next week for our first March. Um, what month we're in? Next week will be March. What? No, we're March now. Next week. <laughs> Do you know? I've totally lost the plot. Next week will be our next, our first April video. So um, we'll be starting with a whole new colour palette, and um, I think we're going to have some fun through April. It's it's. Uh, it's looking good so far so yeah have a great day thank you all for joining me it's been a bundle of fun lovely to see some new um new visitors as well i hope you've enjoyed that and i will see you next week for our first april video have a great day and i'll see you soon bye